Hey guys, Chan Chan here, or Tricerobat, same person. Today's video I'm so excited because my pre-order arrived, my figure pre-order for Yami Yugi, the Puppet Parade. I'm, I'm very excited, as you might be able to tell. So this box is massive, like, oh. This box is huge, I don't think the box needs to be that big, but it is. <laughs> I ordered from Yokaiju, which is uh, a business here in the UK that imports from Japan and then sends to, like, us customers. <laughs> so, uh, I'm gonna get out of fursuit and then we're gonna open this box. I already took my address off so you can't see where I live. <laughs> anyway, so I've got my little scalpel here. I love this tape, this tape's really cool. Sometimes I think about doing um, custom tape for my business, but I just don't really see the point for my little business where I post out once uh, every so often, you know? <laughs> anyway, uh, I will say I don't have all of my um, Pokemon plushies behind me right now, because I'm currently sorting my workroom again. I feel like I'm always sorting this workroom and then uh, I never get it quite how I want it, but anyway. <laughs> Finally. Okay, let's see why this box is so massive, because the thing is not that big. Oh, <laughs> that's uh, unexpected. It's like, it's, that's so weird. Wow, I've never seen like crinkle paper, but it's attached. That's so weird. It looks like it's made of like old cereal boxes. That's cool. Anyway, uh, here's my order slip. Give me a second, I'm not sure if you can see that I might have personal info on. Never mind, it's just like, a, oh, it looks like a handwritten note, that's kind of nice. Uh, it's just like a little, like a little thank you note. Uh, yeah, cool. <laughs> so, let's um, try and free him from this um, crinkle paper prison. I was emptying out the Yokaiju box and I found this cute little sticker. So uh, thank you, Yokaiju. You honestly go above and beyond on your um, customer service. Like little handwritten thank you notes, little stickers. Honestly, I'm exactly the same with my customer service, so really appreciate it. Here he is in his bubble wrap. <laughs> oh, I'll have to remove the bubble wrap. It's very nicely packaged with bubble wrap and crinkle paper and tissue paper so you can... Oh, I'm ripping the tissue paper. Ideally I would like to uh, preserve some of the tissue paper to reuse. I'll try my best. Oh! There he is! Oh my god, I'm so excited. Let's readjust the camera. Okay, we're lower down now so that we can see what's happening and we're not just top-down view. <laughs> so, I've been waiting for this pre-order for a couple of months. It got delayed once. I think I ordered in September, early November? No, I ordered in September and then it was expected in November, but it got delayed and uh, now it's finally here. <laughs> so how do you open these? Um, I'm not sure how much we need to keep these boxes, but I do like to keep my anime figure boxes where I can. I guess I'll get back to you in a few minutes once I've figured out how to open this. I'm always nervous opening figures on camera, because I'm like, oh, what if I break them? What if something goes wrong? But i got to try my best. There's some more tape here. Uh, oh, that's. I think this just slides out. Yep. Slide in. And then I think that box is just. a box. And now we get to put him together. He comes with a little instruction paper so we can piece him together. Uh, where's all the tape around here? 
I think I got all the tape. Guess we'll find out in a second. Jesus Christ, that's stiff. Oh, I don't want to break him. I don't want to break him. Oh, this is scary. Okay, I freed top. These little pops are really stiff. The little plastic pops. Oh, they're so stiff and I'm so scared. Maybe I can get it from the other side. Okay, maybe it'd be smarter to do it this way. There we go, I've done it. Okay, so we have our hexagonal stand. I was kind of like, I didn't expect the stands to look like this. At first I was kind of like, oh, it's not like the best. And you know, I'm still kind of like that. I do wish the stands looked a bit different, but that's okay. It's just the stand. It's not that important, I think. And anyway, here's the main event. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. How do I unwrap him? Oh no, I'm scared. Okay, so there's like a little bag over his hand and um, this just kind of slides off. Yes. Oh, I was so excited, and I'm also really scared because I really don't want to break him. I love the pose. I really love uh, figures with detailed hands. I'm still new to figure collecting. I just made a my figure collection uh, account and have been documenting my collection. Oh my gosh, this figure's so good. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um. Let me put him down. And then we have a teeny tiny Millennium Puzzle, which I think is probably taped shut somewhere, or sealed. Yeah, it's sealed shut. Okay, there we go. Just a bit of tape. Um, I'll remove that tape so I don't stick it to anything. Uh, stick it on the sofa for now. <laughs> okay, so when this figure first released, I was like... Mm, I don't know if I'll want to get it because the Millennium Puzzle has this like sculpted chain. If we get in close we can see that the chain is sculpted and I was kind of like, oh, I was hoping it would be like a real chain. Uh, but the puzzle is like loose on there, so if you really wanted to, you could theoretically, you know, snip this chain and replace it with a real chain. Uh, I probably won't because that's kind of like... Um, a bit scary to do <laughs> on a figure that cost me £40. Uh, there he is, there's the little Millennium Puzzle. Uh, he also comes with a tiny little card, which I'll leave in the bag until we're ready to give him it. I'll take the stand out of its bag too. Okay, so the stand on the bottom we have all of the um, all of the uh, branding copyright things going on and then why do we have oh yeah we have three pigs so that we put him on the stand correctly um, he's got a little scuff in the stand portion of his foot but you know it doesn't really matter okay uh, are we putting him on the stand yet probably not we're probably not putting him on the stand yet I think the first priority should be getting his necklace on um, yeah. I'm glad this is a bendy plastic, it's not stiff. Okay, so his head should, in theory, pop off. Okay, his, um, his collar is, okay, there we go. His, um, collar necklace choker is attached to his head, so there's that. Uh, oh, it, it's so tiny, he's got like the world's tiniest neck. <laughs> um, and then we put the Millennium Puzzle around his neck and then um, we try our best not to damage him while we put him back in. So the neck peg and the uh, hole that the neck goes into have little um, markings like a, a set position they'll go in. Um, it's a little bit tricky to see I think but it went in very easily there 
so that's nice. It wasn't too difficult to get back in. Oh, it's looking good! Okay, now we just have to get this teeny tiny little card out of this bag. I think I'll use some scissors here just to snip that tape. And then get the card out without... Get rid of that tape. I'm always scared that the tape's going to stick to the figure and then ruin the paint, so <laughs> I like to get rid of the tape. Oh, it's so tiny. I'm going to scared to lose this one. Okay, we have the tiny little Jewel Monsters card. I can't even get it in the frame. I don't want to scratch the paint off with my nails. So on the back it's just blank um, and then on the front it's got... Well, I guess this is the back and that's the front, but you know what I mean. This is the painted side and this is like a blank kind of design. Anyway, so this will go in his hand. Oh, come on camera, let's stay in focus. Stay in focus for the dramatic moment of trying our very best to get the card to go into his hand. Um, maybe it should go like that. Okay. It probably should go that way up, but I think I'm gonna turn it round. There we go. So now when you look at him from the front, you can see the uh, design on the back of the card a bit more. Um, yeah, you can just choose which way you want to put that. Anyway, now he can stand on his stand, hopefully. Let's see. It's probably to move his leg a bit. Oh, there we go. Because he is PVC, you do have to bend his leg into place a little bit. But I think that's okay. He looks good. There he is. I've been waiting quite a while to get this figure. And you know what? I think I love it. Let's do a little look over for the paint job. And all of that stuff. And then um, I guess I'll give you my thoughts. So I've had a look at all of the paint job and the sculpt. And just general things about the figure. And now I'd like to give you a couple of little, like, overview points of him and maybe give my opinions about him. And then we can go into some beauty shots and then the video will be done. So, let's start off with the paint defects, because there are a couple of very small paint defects. Nothing too major, though. It's only, like, little tiny things. So the first one is that little white dot there. Uh, it's not actually white, it's transparent, clear... Um, the glue, it's just a shiny little glue speck. Not that noticeable, not a big deal. There's also a little tiny um, dot of like grey paint on his um, shirt there. Not a big deal, it's not that noticeable, doesn't bother me that much. Um, there's also a little tiny paint bump on his inner thigh, but you don't see it unless you are like really looking for it, so I wouldn't worry. Anyway, then, around the back, uh, there aren't any paint defects I can really see, nor can I see any more glue smudges, aside from the only part of the figure that I might be tempted to call bad, which is the back of the hair. Um, it, it's okay sculpt-wise, the sculpt's fine, it's just, can you see that glueiness? It's quite gluey. Um, but you know, it's the back of the figure, and unless you're going to display your figure like this, I don't think you need to worry. So now we've established that people tend to display their figures from the front and not behind where all the glue is. <laughs> I think the front of the figure looks amazing. I love this so much. I'm so glad that I pre-ordered him. I really like how they sculpted the hair and the hair colour choice as well. Uh, sometimes Yugi figures have very orange fringes and it looks a bit strange. But this one, I think they chose a really nice yellow. Like, it's a little bit dull, but that's the point. That's what his hair looks like in the anime, so quite like that. I think my only critique would be that the Millennium Puzzle is quite dull. I wish that it was gold, but, you know, I could take some gold paint and dry brush it on. 
I'm talking like good quality artist gold paint, like fine tech or something. Um, none of that cheap stuff on an expensive figure like this. <laughs> but I probably won't because it, it was still £40. That's like, that is a little chunk of money to spend on a little plastic anime boy. So I probably won't be doing any modifications to him because uh, he was still costing money so I would like to not damage him. When I ordered him I was a little bit worried that the skin would look a bit strange in real life. I have another figure that doesn't have any shading on his skin and it looks a bit dull but this one I think it's the material choice really helps and the skin looks fine. There's not that much shading on him really like I think is there any on his hair? I, I don't know I don't think there's any on his hair. I think the only real shading is on his trousers. Is there any shading? Never mind, there's not actually any shading on this figure. There's no shading. But it actually looks really good. <laughs> so, um, Good Smile and Max Factory, you have done a great job. I and mean, Max Factory is considered one of the better um, figure manufacturers, I hear. So, I'm, I'm very new to figure collecting. So, um, good job. <laughs> I really like this figure. Would I recommend everyone buy this figure? Uh, that depends on if you like the Millennium Puzzle, how it is here, just little nitpicky things. Uh, I can't recommend it to people. Use your judgement. Do you like the pose? I think the pose is really nice. The arms are sculpted nicely too, like I do like the detail on the arms. Um, oh, I just love this figure so much. I'm just so happy I bought this. <laughs> I am so tempted to buy Kaiba and the Dark Magician Girl now. Update. Uh, I ordered Kaiba and Dark Magician Girl regular colour variant. <laughs> Whoops. If I had to pick a favourite part of this figure, I don't think I could. I love all of it. I do love the hands. The hands are one of the things that really drew me to this figure. Like, look how delicate they are. Look at that. Look at that sculpt. Oh, I love it so much. And oh, I just love everything about this figure. Okay, I'm, I'm rambling, so we're gonna go to beauty shots because I do ramble a lot. So here he is with the Yugi Nendoroid and my um, Dark Side of Dimensions figure as well. So you can see a difference between the three. These are all of the Yu-Gi-Oh figures I currently own, but I will definitely be adding definite. But I will definitely be adding more Yu-Gi-Oh figures to my collection soon. Probably some Kotobukiya ones. Uh, we will see. I think this figure is well worth what I paid for him. The pop-up parade line is described as being somewhere between a prize figure and a scale figure, and that is exactly what I would describe this as. It's really nice quality. Not quite as nice as a scale figure, but much better than a prize figure, I think. Though I guess it depends on the specific prize figure, you know, some are better than others. <laughs> I have no idea where I'm going to put this figure. I will try and fit it on my desk, but <laughs> we will see. We will see where he ends up living, because um, my desk is full of anime figures and toys, so good luck to me in like five minutes when I put this on my desk. <laughs> So I'm going to go because I do tend to ramble. So thank you so much for watching. Please do not hit the like button as that probably hurts. It's not very nice. So maybe shake his hand instead. With that being said, I hope to see you in the next one. And bye.